Hello and welcome to another episode of Off My Shelves, a YouTube series dedicated to taking books off my shelves and showing them to you at home in the hope that it might inspire a purchase or show you something new or satisfy you general kind of nosiness into other people's collections and books if you're anything like me really. In this episode we're going to be looking at Parker the Martini Edition by Darwin Cook and so we will get underway. Now for those who've never read any Darwin Cook or read any Parker or anything, this is a beast of a book, a hefty old book in every way and it contains essentially kind of two longer stories and then two shorter stories of Parker. There was a novel series written by a gentleman called Richard Stark and this is Darwin Cook's adaptation of that. Now it was a crime noir thriller series and he has kind of kept that through really set in the kind of 1950s and 60s and all that, that kind of world and it's perfectly fit into Darwin Cook's art. Darwin Cook has sadly passed away now and he will definitely be missed because his artwork is it's just stunning. I mean, if you've read New Frontier or any of the Parker, you know yourselves how good an artist Darwin Cook is. And Parker, for my money, is the best of Darwin Cook, really. So anyway, we'll take a closer look at this now and you can judge yourself whether you think it's the best Darwin Cook has to offer or not. So Parker the Martini Edition by Darwin Cook. This is everything a book fan or collector would want in a book, to be fair. It is stunning. From this understated kind of slipcase to the actual build of the book itself, it's beautiful. But before we get into it, the contents are on the outside of the slipcase, which doesn't happen too often. So it contains the hunter, the man with the getaway face, and the outfit, and then a short adaptation of the book, The Seventh. Now, if you don't know much about this series, Darwin Cook, the artist who sadly is no longer with us now, was adapting the books of Richard Stark, who's a pseudonym for an author, which you find out all about inside the book as we go through it. Now, one thing you will note, this is my book right here, has got a little bit of damage. Now, I got this for just under £40, including post and packaging, which is a very good deal. And I know the site I got it from didn't have any more. And I really wanted it, so I thought it's worth a tiny little bit of damage to not have the messing around, really. And there's the spine of the book as well, with a little martini glass there. Very simplistic boards overall, but really good quality the size on this book as well i should say is pretty hefty and i'll give you a few size comparisons now here's your standard size kind of trade paperback as a size comparison and then even as a slight more comparison an absolute edition absolute batman year, year one and you can see there that there's a definite kind of size difference this being longer and wider and yeah, it's a beast of a book. And a beautiful book at that, yeah. The binding as well, we'll have a quick look at. It contains two longer form books, that being The Hunter and The Outfit. And then The Man with the Getaway Face is slightly shorter in length. But it's still excellent in every way. And then The Seventh is a short story adaptation towards the end of the book. What I really like about this book as well, by the way, is how it starts off with a lot of the extras. So it kind of almost forces you in. If you're anything like me, sometimes the extras, because they come at the back, you kind of overlook them sometimes unless you're really passionately into that book or into that subject. But with this book, because they were right there at the beginning, I kind of delved into them without thinking, really. And so Hunting the Hunter is all about kind of a comics discussion really between Darwin Cook and his friends Ed Brubaker and other people and there's a transcribed conversation about the books of Richard Stark and about how they wanted to adapt them really and what I like most as well is that all of these opening pages have text on the one side and then Darwin Cook art on the other in this massive oversized format and some of them are absolutely beautiful but the introductions to this book, if you've never kind of experienced Richard Stark's books at all, gives you the rundown as to why Darwin Cook is doing it, what makes him special, and a bit about the author, and a bit about the process. And so it's really good. I mean, look at that. Absolutely stunning. 
and that for that matter, his use of colour and his artwork. Darwin Cook is well up there with one of my favourite comic book artists of all time, without shadow of a doubt. And yeah, as we look flick through over here, even like splash pages like that, so there's a lot of effort. We haven't even got into the book yet, and we already cut a, a nice chunk into it, and it's just the extras, really. And these are all descriptions taken straight from Richard Stark's book with artwork next to it accompanying and complementing the statements, really. Now, this is Donald Westlake, who is Richard Stark. He was, Richard Stark is a pseudonym for Donald Westlake. And the idea is, is Darwin Cook is adapting, obviously, his work into the graphic novel format. And the Hunter starts right here. And it starts so bold that it's almost unbelievable sometimes, I think. The audacity of him. He starts it off and he just literally says next to no words. This opening page is one of the few pages right the way into the book that you get Parker talking. And as you can see, he just says, go to hell. Now, Parker is very much a crime noir. Parker comes back into town and he's got vengeance on his mind. He's, something has happened to bring him back into the fold, into the city, and he is out for revenge, really. So these first opening pages are him getting a suit, getting a new identity, getting everything, getting things ready for his vengeance to start. And it's just such beautiful artwork. The colour coding of the pages as well changes, and it changes depending on the story you read it. So you'll see this slight blue tinge turn into a yellow tinge or slightly darker blue in the other stories. Each has got its kind of own colour theme as well. But this is very much stylistically the style of all of the books that you'll be going through, really. Some pages are far wordier than others, but in general, this is excellent crime fiction really and Darwin Cook is a master of, of artwork an absolute master in every way I mean this page for example just shows his amazing skill to kind of get across really complex kind of stories within the Richard Stark book and then transfer them into the graphic novel world with very easy to follow kind of chunks explaining quite a deep plan of a heist and yeah St absolutely stunning book in every way. The Hunter will take you right up into page 172 and then you get straight into the man with the getaway face. Again, without having to spoil too much in this story, this story is very much a bridge between Hunter and the events of Hunter and going into the outfit because Parker has to alter how he looks, he has to change his looks. And you can see right from the get-go that the colour has changed on these panels. And the paper quality on these books is stunning as well. Really thick, heavy, matte paper. Absolutely wonderful. The Outfit, which is a really complex book, and it does an amazing couple of tricks visually, really. And I will show you them now. You can see that the art style slightly changes and diversifies, and he's using these visual cues to kind of tell the story in a different way even going so much as having like a magazine within the story crime confession weekly and so he turns his story into very much a magazine part way through and it's still engaging in every way and even the artwork kind of gets stylistically super different but then quickly and slowly but surely it gets back to that standard darwin cook artwork with a heavy blue tinge this time there or a page as we go through, to not spoil things too much, you get the short story, The Seventh, at the end. And this is a very short story, but again, the colour has changed massively. And then you get into some story notes at the back and some more artwork by Darwin Cook. And that is that. So if you like looking at Parker as well and you pick up this volume, make sure to pick up volume two of this series later on in May 2021 because the last call Parker, the Martini edition, will be coming out and that'll be collecting the kind of last run of Darwin Cook stories. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed looking at Parker, the Martini edition with me. By all means, have a look at the other videos we've got on the channel and like and subscribe and share whenever you can. Any support and help will be massive. Massively appreciated, but thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.